Hey guys, my name is Court Rai. I do a website called electricbikereview.com. I look at all the electric bikes I can, I test them, I compare them, and then I list the details on my website. So today I just wanted to give you a quick walkthrough of a pedal assist electric bike. Uh, this bike is a Stromer ST2. You can see the cockpit up here. You got brakes, shifters, a bell, a light for safety. And then over here we've got this little control console. We got a button for the light, a plus and a minus. And this is the display. So when I, I press that plus button, it's going to deliver me to different levels of pedal assist. One, two, and three. The higher you go, of course, the more power you get. And that's for people who want to, um, you know, get some help climbing or they're facing wind or maybe they're like me and they have a knee injury. That's how I got into this space. So without further ado, um, I'm going to try to demonstrate how this bike works when you pedal. If you come back here, you can see this little plate. That's a metal plate right there. That's a strain gauge. And so as the chain tension increases, as you push on this and you're pedaling, maybe the weight of your body is on this bike and you're going up a hill, that chain is going to strain this piece of metal. And that actually sends some feedback and you get assistance that's proportional or roughly proportional to how much energy you're exerting. And as soon as you stop, the tension in there reduces and the motor stops. So this is a gearless direct drive motor back here. It doesn't have any gears inside. It's not as easy to hear. It's really quiet. Um, it actually offers regenerative braking as well to help save your, your disc brakes. So what I'm trying to say is this, is this is very fancy. It's a little bit quieter. So we're gonna have to listen closely to hear the motor. So I'm gonna take this crank over here. I'm gonna pedal and we're gonna try to get that motor activated. There we go. Did you see how at first it was just me pulling on that about half a rotation and then it caught and it was listening to that signal and it said, okay, that, that wheel's moving, the person's pedaling hard, we're gonna give them some assistance. And as soon as I stopped, the system cuts out. Okay, so that's a couple of the, the interesting points here are that if you don't put in a lot of force, the motor doesn't kick on. Right? It's, again, it's proportional. And as soon as you add power, there you go, then it gets up to speed. Just like if you were riding a traditional bike, you can even hear the regen, kind of that hum going on in there. So part of the reason they, there's a little bit of a delay with this bike um, is they don't want to have a situation where you're at a stoplight or a stop sign and you're holding the brakes and you're resting your foot there just to be balanced and you're leaving some weight on. If, if it were to, to turn the motor on at that point, the bike would be unpredictable. It could kind of get out of control. So they purposefully, they, they have a little bit of delay that you not only have to push, but you have to wait for a second. So here we go again. There we go, right? So it's about half a crank turn and then the motor kicks on and you get assistance. In contrast to the ST2 we were looking at earlier, I wanted to show a class two electric bike. This one uses a throttle. It doesn't require input from the rider to go. It's more like a scooter. And this is something that uh, someone actually added this motor aftermarket and they just zip tied the wires and they put a battery pack up here. And then you can see this big throttle. Okay, so, you know, if I pedal this bike, it's just like a normal bike. Nothing really happens. It doesn't even have any pedal assist, but I come up here in this big trigger throttle and I press that. You can see the front wheel spinning. This bike doesn't go especially fast. Um, it's not especially powerful, uh, but it is a class two. It uses that throttle. Some of the, the trade-offs with a design like this is you can accidentally bump it if you're lifting it or parking it at the bike rack. And it's just, a, it's just kind of cheaper and it might be a little bit more distracting if you're riding and compromising your grip in order to press that throttle versus keeping your eyes on the road and just focusing on pedaling. Some other throttle powered electric bikes have like kind of a half grip twist, like a motorcycle right here. And that's, that's another kind of a trade off situation where, you know, if you're riding over bumpy terrain or you're, you're on a mountain trail, for example, it's easier to kind of accidentally activate that more so than, than the pedaling situation down here. So just wanted to give you another, another quick demo of, of what that means, what that looks like, and uh, hopefully help you out. As someone who commutes, you're going 
10 plus miles, uh, this can be a really great technology. It's the kind of thing that empowers you to, to get on on a bicycle. Um, no matter the weather, you'll notice this has, has fenders and stuff. And, you know, I mentioned faster earlier because we've all been in, we've been there, you know, fighting the wind or climbing that hill and you're just, you're just drudging along. Um, this is the kind of technology that helps you. It's very popular in Europe and it's become more and more popular in the U.S. Uh, batteries right here. Here's the cockpit again, just trying to give you an overview in case you've never seen an electric bike. It's got a special kickstand that's actually designed to kind of stow itself, stay out of the way. It's got integrated lights. So when you're riding this thing, people can see you at the front or the rear. It's even got a special body float here. This is, this is designed to kind of com add some comfort because they assume you're going a little bit further. You're using this like a car. So, yep, I hope that helps you out.